that Mavericks team took the Clippers to six games with oh, Chris Dats Porzingis. That's one. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. Two. As Miles correctly mentioned, they have no answer for, for uh, Luka Doncic, like none. Um, whether I mean like Kawhi Leonard, for whatever reason, refuses to mark him, and he can't mark him an entire game. Paul George and Marcus uh, Morris, they can't guard him, and then it doesn't matter because all he does, and I mean Luka, is head hunt matchups. So he just runs a bunch of pick and rolls until he gets, mm -hmm. you know, Reggie Jackson or or Patrick Beverly. And it can't for too sure small. switch off. With too him. small. I was about to say that. <laughs> too too no, small, no, man. Too small. Too well, well, this, this is a family friendly show. This is a family friendly show. No, 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 no. <laughs> too, too effing small. Like, and then what makes it worse is that those pick and rolls are so much more unguardable because they play true free though. Like, Chris Dapperzingis does not want to score in the paint. And neither does Maxi Kleber. They, they're all spaced from the floor. And you saw what? Um, finally, Tim Hardaway Jr. had a good postseason game. On top of that, there are two other things. That was Luca's third triple double in seven playoff games against the Clippers. Third. All right. But I know Neil, you forgot this point. Earlier in the season, the Mavericks destroyed the Clippers by 50 points 5 0. Granted, Kawhi Leonard did not play in that game. But how has you as an organization doing your best to run from a matchup against the Lakers, run into a team that destroyed you by 50, where you cannot guard their superstar? And now that superstar has Kristaps Porzingis. 